4.4 practice problems. A student places a sample of a pure metal in a crucible and heats it strongly in air. Data from the experiment are given in the table above. The final mass was determined after the sample was cooled to room temperature. Which of the following statements uh, related to the experiment is correct? So the mass of the empty crucible was 14 grams. Mass of the crucible and the sample uh, before heating was 14.4 grams, and then the mass of the crucible and sample after heating, and it recooled down to uh, room temperature, was 16 grams. So that means that our sample went from 2.4 grams to 4 grams. Now this is going to be from uh, the air. Um, reacting with that metal forming a metal oxide here but we should see something about that our mass increased because it reacted and formed a new compound so option choice a says that the sample mass decreased uh, that is not true so we can ignore that uh, option choice b says the mass of the sample increased so a chemical change occurred when bonds formed between the metal and another substance that sounds reasonable it sounds like what we predicted there was nothing for the metal to react with, so only a physical change would have occurred. Uh, we would not have had any differential in the mass if there was only a physical change. The sample was only heated, so neither a physical or chemical change occurred. That is uh, not true. Um, even if we didn't react and form anything new, uh, heating something up, you could potentially uh, get it to melt slightly, so then we are going to a uh, like a slightly different shape, and that would have been a physical change. So option choice B is the only choice that um, would make any sense. A student mixes 20 grams of white crystal potassium chloride crystals with distilled water in a beaker. After the mixture is stirred, no crystals are visible and the solution is clear. After several days, all the water evaporates and the white crystals are found in the beaker. Which of the following pieces of experimental evidence would help the student confirm that a new compound has not been made and that only a physical change occurred. So with a chemical change, we are looking for a change in color, a change in state, a change in temperature. Um, and uh, so looking at this, we have white crystals going to a clear substance, which we were just dissolving, um, no evidence of a uh, reaction was stated and then we are producing white crystals at the end so we need something to uh, check against that the white crystals are the same white crystals um, the solution does not change color after stirring uh, this is not evidence of a lack of chemical change rather it is just not something that we can put in the definitely evidence of a chemical change option there so we're going to eliminate that the potassium chloride crystals are no longer visible after mixing it with water. Uh, the process of dissolving is not a uh, chemical process and would not be a good way of proving that um, a lack of chemical process has occurred. There's a temperature change in the solution during the dissolving process. Um, a temperature change would indicate that a chemical reaction was happening. So that would not be a good way to confirm that a new compound had not been made. And then we have option choice D, after the water was evaporated, the white crystals in the beaker have a mass of 20 grams. That means that we have maintained a mass. We haven't uh, gained or lost any mass from any additional uh, reactants that were uh, added to our beaker. So that is um, evidence that nothing additional has been added, therefore uh, no reaction has occurred. The table above summarizes the data given to a student to evaluate the type of change that took place when substance X was mixed with water. The student claimed that the data did not provide enough as evidence to determine whether a chemical or physical change took place and that additional tests would be needed. Which of the following identifies the best way to gather evidence to support the type of change that occurred when water and X were mixed? So um, we have uh, the uh, properties of the water, the mystery substance, and the X. So water was clear and colorless, the X was a white crystalline liquid, 
and the uh, mixture was clear and colorless. The boiling point of water was 100 degrees Celsius. The boiling point of the mystery substance was 1900 degrees Celsius. And then uh, the boiling point of them mixed together was 101. So we increased our boiling point here. Uh, the densities between this also, we have one gram per mil for water, 2.15 grams per mil for the mystery substance, and 1.08 grams per mil for our mixed together portions. So um, we are looking uh, to see what would uh, be needed in order for us to identify that a change has occurred. So we are looking for a color change, a temperature change, or a state change where we are precipitating out um, a, a new thing. So the uh, measuring the melting points of the mixture of water and uh, X, uh, it's already a liquid, so it's already in a uh, liquid form. So that means that a melting point is not going to be helpful. We're already there. Adding another substance to the mixture of water and X to see whether a solid forms. Um, that's not going to indicate whether an initial uh, change happened here. Measuring and comparing the masses of the water X and the mixture of water and X. Um, this would potentially show if uh, an additional reactant was uh, pulled into the substance uh, and reacted with it. However, uh, reactants masses added together should equal the product mass. And so um, this is going to be a pretty weak um, means. And then finally, we have the uh, measuring the electrical conductivities of X in the mixture of water and X. Um, so this would uh, show us whether we have a um, ionic substance and whether we are able to suddenly uh, make something that is capable of conducting electricity, which would indicate that we have uh, separated those ions into the constituent ions. So answer choice G is going to be our best answer here. Which of the following describes the changes in forces of attraction that occur between water as it changes from a liquid to a vapor? So liquid to a vapor, we are going from liquid to gas. So we are not breaking apart our individual water molecules. Instead, we are breaking apart any hydrogen bonds that have formed and intermolecular forces that have formed between the individual water molecules. But we should maintain uh, our actual water compound. So we have H and O bonds break into HH and OO bonds. That would be a decomposition of water. So that would be it uh, breaking into hydrogen and oxygen rather than just simply going to a vapor. So that's not good. Hydrogen bonds between water molecules are broken. Uh, this is an intermolecular force thing that is broken that is allowing it to go from a liquid to a gas. That is what we predicted, so that sounds pretty good, but let's see if there's anything that's better. Covalent bonds between water molecules are broken. Um, they're not, there are not any covalent bonds between water molecules, okay? Uh, otherwise, they would not be individual molecules. They would be a large uh, complex, so that is uh, not the case, not what's happening. The ionic bonds between hydrogen and hydroxide ions are broken. We don't have an ionic bond within water. We're definitely not breaking it by just going from a liquid to a gas. Covalent bonds between the hydrogen ions and the water molecules become more effective. So we're not going to form covalent bonds between something that has a charge and something that doesn't have a charge. And we are also um, not going to increase the amount of attraction between molecules if we are going from a gas, or sorry, a liquid to a gas. So that doesn't make any sense either. So option choice B, where we have the hydrogen bonds uh, being broken between the water molecules is going to be the only thing that follows uh, that logic.